So we will be starting by creating a new account uh, from the very start. So I will... What the heck happened here? Well, we're streaming twice. Oh, yeah, of course we have. <laughs> so I will start by essentially putting an account to... Um, let's call the guy called James at goldanvil.com. We has no James, but if we did... And we're creating our account. The first thing that people will see once they create an account is, in fact, a choice of what sort of um, account they want to create. And they have the, 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 the choice of creating a hero uh, and they're creating a world. We'll be going for hero at this point because we're creating a character, of course. Yeah, we're making RPG characters. When you do that, as it says down here, um, the system automatically cuts down all the features that you do not need. The features are still there, and you can still activate them very easily from the account details, but for uh, ease of mind and essentially to declutter the uh, interface, these are not visible. I can show you later on how to activate them. So the first thing we do essentially here is to create a character. So let's call the character, we'll call it girl. What's your name? Lucy. Okay, nice. And here, Diamond. Diamond. Lucy Diamond, that's a beautiful name. Diamond. And in synthesis, Lucy is a young, aspiring bard. bard and seeker of alien artifacts. Nice. Bardiologist. Bardiologist. I'm going to find a nice image for here. In fact, I have on my desktop an ready made thing. And I will choose essentially to play with Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, Dungeons 5th Edition here. We can have additional options here, which is effectively the honorific, if she had the honorific, but she does not have any. If she has a nickname, we can call it, for example, Sparky. Sparky. Sounds like a dog. Uh, go with Sparky. I love it. Spark. Let's say Spark. Okay. And the current location is, for example, the north of... Um, Astoria. Astoria, apparently. Good. And we save the changes. Boom. Once this is actually created, and it's loaded. I'm sorry, guys, we have a very slow connection because we're streaming like a thousand things at this point. Um, you arrive on your account. Of course, you don't have much information here, uh, but that's what we're here to do. So the first thing to do is to, first of all, edit the character and start adding details to it. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go to edit. And the first page you have here, which are the basic profile details, allows you to give some basic information that we've already added to the character. You can put the current date, if you know what the current day is, uh, from your campaign, and uh, a, story, a small bio we have added already, and define also the system of your character. Uh, because we have already chosen a, a, a character a system, uh, we can also have the ability to create our own sheet, which we will do. Yes. Before we go to the sheet, though, Let's go see the extended profile. Extended profile is there to give you the ability to write for your character a more extended background. Yeah. Effectively to give you more information when it comes to the um, appearance, mentality, personality, and social status of your character. I will not go through everything here, but I would like to say is that uh, you can write anything you want in here. Uh, this is for your character, and this automatically creates effectively the details that if your character joins a campaign, will be given to your storyteller as well for them to know. So let's say something simple things for uh, our beloved Lucy. She's a human. Uh, she chaotic is good. chaotic good. Best alignment. And her gender is female. female. Her eyes are red. Uh, scarlet, the wood. Uh, scarlet. Her hair is Blue. indigo. The skin tone is pale, and she is five, five four. Four, four inches, and she weighs how much is that in pounds? I don't know, pounds at all. I don't know. 55 kilos. There you go. 55 kilos. Good. Um, you can also go to appearance and essentially say a bit more about her physique and her identity, uh, her physical quirks, apparel accessory. Let's say that she. She has tattoos on her face. Tattoo on her face that was put there to hide her 
birthmark. So as a player, you can go back and add these details whenever. We That's just want to show you a little bit of the options that you have. Exactly. And anything that you don't fill in will not, will not appear, appear as an all. option. And we can see actually how this looks. We can actually go here and go to this profile now. And you will see that if I go to about, you have the quick information we put in there. If you go under appearance, only the body filters appear because that's the only thing we've added, in fact. Absolutely. So you won't have titles with empty fields. That It doesn't look good. We don't want to do that to you. Exactly. You can choose and you can see all the way down that quick tab um, all the options that you have. And you can fill in every single dynamic of the character that you think is useful as a player. Exactly. Now, for the next part, we're going to go to the sheet, which is very important for the story, for the Absolutely. characters. So as you see here, you do not have a character sheet, but you do have already a, a game. Yeah, uh, we've chosen a, a TTRPG system. So it will ask us to choose the sheet we have. So these are all the sheets that are available for the 5th edition. You see, of course, that there are some that are not for characters and some of them that are for uh, things like that. We have a Chinese version, for example, character sheet. Uh, but we will be using necessarily this, which is the character sheet, the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition for players. Yeah, basically. absolutely. I love that there's also a monster one, so you can create a monster and play on heroes. You could. Yeah. I mean, your characters are mostly The monsters. life of a sad kobold. <laughs> yes. So uh, this is the character sheet we have here. And I'm going to uh, very quickly uh, add some basic details here. We said this is a bard. bard. First level. Background is archaeologist. Yeah. The race is human. Alignment is chaotic good. Coefficiency bonus two. will be plus two. And let's do some very simple. Ten. 10, 14, 14, 9, 9, 5, 15, 12, uh, which is uh, about 16. 16. Ah. Excellent. Let's not have the saving throws here. Effectively, you can fill your uh, seat here. And what I will add here is the armor class. Let's say she's wearing some basic armor. She has maximum hit points, or a bit less than maximum hit points. She has an initiative of 2 and a speed of 30 feet. Very simple stuff here. Okay, here's a Hidai of one. A Hidai type is a D8, I think, for... Yeah, just uh, say so an eight. Bad. If any of these details are not correct, guys, we're just rattling them off from the top of our heads. Just put exactly. some uh, put some data in there. Yes. Fill in the forms if you would. Uh, apart from doing that, which I'm going to save right now, so I'm going to go here and save the changes, you can also use this system down here for the spell slots and collections to add effectively additional sheets on your character. Yes. Uh, for our bard, I will just select maybe um, how many, first of all, how many spells he has. I think bards have two first level spells. So I think Let's say they do. Let's say they have two level spells, okay? And uh, this is the spell slots. And then the next thing I'm going to be doing is actually going through here and putting what, which spells he has. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, the community stat blocks. Dungeons and Dragons is already added to my account because uh, I have selected it as such. So I will go to Spells. And from the Spells, let's search something very easy. Let's say, for example, she has aid, uh, Acid Arrow um, as a uh, cantrip. And she has also, let's say... Light. There you are. Light. So, and light. 18, So, I'm going to go back to my sheet. Edit extended. Oh, sorry. That was the wrong button. Edit profile. Actually, I have also a view sheet here, which is much easier. I can go edit. And I can go to my uh, spells. spells and do 0 level 88. And what was the other? 133, three, right? Yeah. So, what happens with that is, first of all, that we have, uh, if we go to my spell book now, which is here. You will see that I have, in fact, the two uh, spells already available to me. Yeah, so then and while in game, I can, in fact, roll for damage, for example, or to hit with them, if that is actually part of the spells of the spell itself. Uh, if I wanted to, as well, I could put arms and equipment. Like, for example, I could go there and find the long sword, etc., etc., uh, to fill the character uh, as we wanted. Um, and also, if I had, for example, a class features and the features had sheets, I can actually put them there. If I had any mounts, if I wanted to have my race specifically written here to get some more information, retinue, which I don't think it's something a first character would have, no. would have. But yeah, you could be having them there. Now, let's go back to our profile. 
And you can see now that when I load the sheet, I have two things. First of all, I have the sheet here, which I can click on the buttons to roll. But also on the top of the sheet, I have this, which is effectively the tracker that I'm using during session in order to get some more details that I need to essentially as the session goes. So for example, my current health, because it's changing all the time, for example, um, the unused hit die, if I have any, I do have one unused, for example, if I have any temporal hit points and how many I have used, uh, any conditions, for example, uh, fatigued. let's say fatigued, uh, any resources I might have, for example, for classes like the inspiration, Paladin. Is, for yeah, Inspiration, for example. Uh, but, um, let's say they start with three Inspiration points, for uh, example. How do you call them? Swashbucklers, for example, get panache points. Um, monks get, um, they call key points. Yeah. Um, so there's all sorts of trackable points that you can use. Actually, Inspiration is a different thing. Inspiration, uh, this is what you're talking about, is a class resource. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. And of course, we have still the XP, which, because I'm starting right now, it's zero. And I can just save here. Yeah. And because I have here also, I have said that I have two slots for first level, it gives you essentially the ability to see how many slots I have available. So by saving that, all everything is saved and I can go back and refresh it while I'm playing the game to effectively make sure that I'm staying uh, essentially uh, up to speed of what's happening. Yeah, and this is all mobile friendly. So if you want to be accessing it in play with Indeed. your mobile, it's, it's absolutely ergonomic and it works beautifully. Exactly. In addition to that, you can add your equipment. So let's say that uh, Lucy is carrying a longsword, which is a weapon. She has one of them. She's also carrying a buckler, which is an armor. Uh, she has a backpack, which is, I think it's called generic equipment, or let's say it's clothing. So, uh, and at any given point, uh, you can actually change those as well. So, if I refresh this page, because right now we just added them, you can see you can actually change the quantity. So, I can go here and say, for example, in fact, she has two backlers, the one that she stole from a goblin she just killed kind of thing. And that's automatically saved, by the way. Every time I add something here, it's automatically saved. Um, in addition to that, I can add uh, images, and I will show you how to do that. I can write journals. We can go through that as well, and we can see the history of the character, which we'll also see after the session. Now, more or less, the character is ready for the first session. Nice. Um, that means that we ha you have the basic details for the background that we want to show to your storyteller. We have a sheet, in theory, filled up, and we have our equipment. Now, how do we get the character to join a session? Your storyteller, when they're creating uh, a game and they have a, a, a campaign going, they will have a unique link that they can give to you in order for you to join their game. Uh, I have it already here, so I will just paste it on my browser because, in theory, my, my storyteller gave it to me already. Yeah. And what you do, it will tell you you have been invited by Dimitris, which is the, the storyteller who's running the game, to join the Legends and Glory campaign. If your character, uh, do you want, uh, which character do you want to join the campaign? So I have only one character this, in this. If you had multiple characters, you will have on an option here. here. Profile, you will have multiple options, and you can select which of your characters you want to add to that campaign. Exactly. So at this point, we're choosing Lucy because yes. that's the only one. And once uh, Lucy is chosen... I really like this character now, by the way. I've, I've got attached already. <laughs> so first of all, Lucy appears in the list of the protagonists here. Hey, look, we can see ourselves. What? Yeah. Uh, Lucy can also see now in this uh, session, essentially the past sessions, which are hidden right now because they're not they She didn't take part in any of them. Uh, she can read about the, ro the, the lore that the storyteller decided that they should know about. So effectively, she has access to some articles that and uh, the storyteller believes that you should read before you start playing the game. So the storyteller can put these together in advance and make those available to players, and then the players exactly. can read through them, hopefully before the game rather than during the game. But, exactly. You know, some players. And that was the point, that the moment you join essentially the campaign, you go to this page as Absolutely. well. And of course, you can go see the maps, if, you, if there are any maps that you have access to kind of thing, to get some more information about that. Uh, and of course, you can join the Discord, which is massive. I have to fix that. Join the massive Discord <laughs> chat for the game, or uh, join the campaign in Roll Twenty, for example. Yeah, exactly. So you can you can choose those, I think. Can't you? Oh wow! Look, you can see ourselves. That's Hello, say, myself. Yeah. So um, go back to Lucy. If we go back to the profile of Lucy, you can now see that Lucy, in fact, uh, is uh, has joined the ca the campaign for Legends and Glory, yeah. and she has access to uh, go check the campaign page. We just went there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much where we are right now. Uh, the, 
Lucy is ready to play the first game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on the other side, which uh, I'm playing as a storyteller, and I'm going to create a new session that will include Lucy into it. So the first thing I'm going to do here, you don't need to see that essentially, but I'm adding Lucy as a character to this um, party. To this party, and after adding Lucy to the party, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go to sessions. So I'm going to create a new session. So this is all stuff that your storyteller will be doing. Exactly. Whilst um, sort of as set up for the game. And then once they set the session up, they will start the session. And then if you press the start button. I will not start it just yet because I want to show some of the guys. So Fair as you enough. can see right now here, uh, there is no way for me to enter the session. The moment I start the session as a storyteller on the other screen, if I refresh this page, Suddenly, the enter session button appears. Exactly. And this is the way, the gateway for Lucy to join effectively the session. So by clicking on enter the session, Lucy is transported to her in session screen. That's not more like, that's not the, the game master screen. It's essentially the screen that is designed specifically for Lucy to be able to, or for the player who plays Lucy, to take part in the campaign. What Lucy has access while she go, she's in the session is, first of all, to be able to see information about all her uh, friendly uh, uh, player characters that are played with her. Here, she can see the party quests and equipment. For example, this party currently has the, uh, the quest to the quest save, to save the, world. the gold by saving the cheerleader. And Classic. she can also see the third party assets and she can add or subtract from them as well. In addition to that, if she goes to her, to her home screen, she can write notes. And that's a very important mechanic in Gold Danville. Yes. So for example, it would be um, we enter a tavern. meeting the party for the first time, for example. And she can make it she choose if it's public or private. If it's private, only she can see it. If it's public, everybody can see it. So let's say she put in public. She can also put achievements. Like, for example, she can decide that this is essentially a relationship, I think, uh, making new friends. It's, it's a milestone for her, for example. And it's actually meeting the Academia Luna, Luna members. Nice. For example, that's the name of the party. Yes, exactly. So you see, essentially, has a relationship a status here that she can uh, update. She can also put a quote if she wants to, like for example, "It's so nice to make new friends." She can update photos. Let's say, okay, the photo I have is a bit um, not correct for what we are trying to do here, but. Uh, it's okay, I'll do it after, afterwards, actually. Or she can also, for example, write out-of-character work. So, for example, out-of-character are things that they're not meant to be in character. It's supposed to be something that she wants to put in notes. So, for example, like she can put in out uh, as a player, I forgot to fill all my spells. God damn it. <laughs> and she wants to be private. I mean, it's a note that's out-of-character, but it's also private, so only she yeah. can see it. So you can see when you do that, first of all, it's a bit muted because it's uh, uh, secret, but it also appears uh, essentially out of character. Do a version that's not private, just uh, so people can see. And the same thing out of character would be, uh, these people are amazing, for example. And that's a public post. It's a public post. And you see that again. It looks like that. It looks like that, but it's not secret anymore. So it shows the, the cross microphone, so you know it's out of character. Exactly. That's the whole idea behind it. So at the same time as we discussed, she can go here and edit her, her, her health tracker. And she can say, for example, that she goes at damage, so now she has six hit points here. Or that she has, she has used one of her spells, so now she has only one remaining. She can always do rolls if the storyteller decides that she will, she needs to. So she can just roll it to end here. Or she can go here and say, you want 20 plus two, for example, here. These roles are shared by the whole of the party. So this is di li live dice slot can be seen by the storyteller at the same time and on other players as well. Uh, as we said before, you have access to your seat. And again, in the seat, she can actually roll from her seat. And she can check her spell book and roll damage for, um, for, for her spell, for example. If uh, Demetrius had added attacks to her sheet, she can also roll attacks and do the damage for those attacks uh, exactly. just by clicking a single button. Um, so skill checks and anything else, any dice rolls that you have entered into your sheet can then be rolled. Exactly. And, and as you can see here, of course, automatically, because she is in session, 
the dice roll that she rolled from the sh scroll actually appear on the dice log effectively yeah, as such. In addition to that, uh, she can see handouts. Uh, handouts are things that the storyteller can send to them, and I will give you an example right now. I will go to the storyteller's part, and I will open the media gallery, and I will decide, for example, they just met a new uh, NPC. It's this guy. Oh, he's meaty. He's a very meaty guy, and if the storyteller says, refresh your handouts, so you can see now the meaty guy that the storyteller said, you just made this dude kind of thing. So you can actually see um, the guy that um, the storyteller wants to show you. So yeah, exactly. if you, this is great if you're playing remotely, but it's also good if you're playing around the table. Exactly. Uh, this can, does not have to be effectively um, a photo. It can be, for example, a sheet. Yeah. Like, or it can be, for example, a document about something they should know about, for example. Let's say, for example, that... Uh, they he wants to show them essentially the monster um, that they're fighting. They're fighting actually because, know. for example, the ranger has rolled insight and has learned more about the monster, or rolled nature and learned more about yeah. the monster. Or, for example, they have an article that they want to show them. So, for example, if I go here and refresh, you can see in fact that you can see an article here. This is an article; it's empty, but it's an article that the storyteller has shared with them because they say we are currently flying. 5,000 feet above the air in the cloud plane kind of thing. Yeah. And the, the storyteller wants you to know a bit more about the cloud plane kind so of thing. So as a player, what you know is that you can ask the storyteller, do you have a picture of this guy you can show on the screen? Can I have a look at this article? Yes. When they say you found a book, oh, can I read more about that in an article? And your, your storyteller can just share it with you really, really quickly. And Adamal has also added, in fact, that um, the, the stream, like both the in-stream stuff. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the, the, the blogging stream while you're in session and also outside session is a really, really good way to get into your character's mind yes. um, and engage without necessarily just being that player that talks all the time. So your character can have reactions even when you're not necessarily talking all the time. Absolutely. Uh, the next step here is actually lore. Cool. Uh, lore, as we discussed before, is effectively a way for you to see the information that the storyteller decided that you should know about. Essentially, your primer. So, if you don't, if, if there is some important information that you should have remembered and you don't, rem and you don't remember currently, uh, you can just go here and necessarily read through it very quickly from your storyteller. Uh, it, these are the things that he told you that you should know. And finally, the scrapbook is a very simple thing that all players have, which is effectively literally a scrapbook. It's a single page that can actually write things like, um, "I need to uh, write my spells for next session." Or remember something to like level up. remember or... to level up, or for example, like that the the bar maiden's name is Lulu, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. And she likes marshmallows. Marshmallows? Who doesn't like marshmallows? I don't even know. Maybe you need to bribe her. Melons. Okay. She likes melons. Uh, and effectively that stays over, so uh, if you ever need to go back to it, you can just go there and write it. It's it's uh, the easiest way for you to keep notes while and you're that playing. that auto-saves, doesn't it? Yes, all of so them. So that's just saved. a place where you can write quick notes and auto-save them and come back to them whenever you need to. Exactly. Let's say we paid our session. Uh, we have done everything we need to be doing, essentially. When the session ends, so I'm, as a storyteller, I'm ending the session right now. Uh, if I go back to my character, to my profile, you will see that essentially the session is not longer uh, active, but I still have access to everything I had before in the session. Yeah. Kind so of thing. everything that um, Demetrius posted while that session was um, active, you can see it's still there. Exactly. One of the things that as a player you can really do to really push the boundaries of your character is effectively to write a journal until this session. Yes. So for example, it might be that uh, this is called uh, the journey to the cloud plane. Nice. And you can go here and write some details about it. Uh, we have been traveling aboard the Good Omen. Nice. From Lai Lali and to Ostia. Nice. For example. And of course, you can actually have some hidden information as well that only you and your storyteller can see. So I can say, for example, um, something like, 
I, I need to uh, talk to you about uh, Peter, whatever this might be. Yeah, you can write private notes, notes you don't want other parts of your party to know. So in secret, this is um, this is connected or is this connected to my secret backstory X, Y or Z? Exactly. Only you and then your storyteller can see. And optionally, you can define here the date in game. So for example, let's say it's the 14th of uh, Lucifer KD, for example, but you can also he come here and by doing advanced to, in fact, put the actual date. So, for example, it can be 214 and Lucifer is the third of the month and it's the 14th day because that will order your sessions based on that date, on the date of the were written, but the date that they were supposed to be in the world kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you can say that this actually, because I play it took part on session six, it is relevant to session six. Yeah. So, by doing that, of course, you can actually see here your uh, uh, your beautiful journal kind of thing, and you can go to your, your profile effectively. And Those journals as well, they can be as long as you like. You can embed images in them. Uh, something that I've done because I do a lot of streamed games is embed the YouTube video of the streamed game mm. in the journal, which That's if you are doing idea. streamed games, is very useful so people can watch along the session as they go through your journals, exactly. if they want to. We had a great question here from Ondo. We said we're going to take questions afterwards. Oh, I beg your pardon. Please yes. go ahead. And finally, uh, what I want to, want to show you actually is the fact that automatically the system creates a, a history yeah. that comp comprises of the events that you put as milestones and the journals that you're writing. Yeah. So by the fifth session, you will have a lot of milestones. You have level ups. You're going to have new relationships. And you found treasure, uh, killing monsters, uh, the story of your character as journals kind of thing. And that will give you and for me, I believe a way that nobody else could ever seen character before in D and D kind of thing, like the actual yeah. story, the living story of your it's character. It's a great timeline of major events, essentially. Exactly. And as I said before, this is how you do them by creating achievements effectively, which you have level up, completed quests, personal achievements, relationship, travels, education, home, family, friends, pets, and events and activities. You build that storyline in, in inclusion with your journals, effectively. And yeah. That is pretty much it, if I don't forget anything. No, I think that's everything. We've talked about how to set up your character, um, and you will realise when you look through the sheet for yourself that there are all sorts of guidelines within the sheet about how to do things. So, for example, how to do the very easy code for um, putting together your uh, attacks so that they show up yeah. as roles. All of that guidance is in the sheet itself. So if you read that, you will find everything you need. There is something very important we forgot to talk about, oh, actually. Do tell me. So if I go back to the, my character, it is a very important one because every player has absolute ownership of the character. Yes. If you want it, this character, which is already part of the world of your storyteller, effectively um, to be seen necessarily as a player of your of that world, you are able to grant access to your play to your character to your storyteller yes. to have access to your character to make additions to your sheet to display the article in their world and also to be able to uh, help you with your shit as well. So to do that, you just go here and you say grant access to Dimitri Storyteller in the Legends of Glory campaign. And by doing that, what happens is that the article that you have for your character now is available to Dimitris in their own world to be able to move around, put in a category, uh, write about and everything like that that they wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, of course, you can always revoke the access. That's not question. Whenever you want to. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to go through the Epic Hero features quickly? Yes. I mean, we don't have Epic Hero right now because the, uh, the campaign does not have Epic oh, Hero. Oh, of course. Sorry. Yes. But effectively, getting an Epic Hero means that uh, you can have unlimited heroes. You see no adverts like these ones up here. Um, you can change the profile status of your character. So that you means can... you can make the character look different. Essentially. Exactly. You can uh, make your character private yeah. so nobody else can see it. And also, you help us a lot continue doing what we're doing. And for me, one of the big things actually that you didn't mention is that you can customize your URL. So oh, yes, when you are, when you create your character, it will come up with a randomized URL that's just some letters and numbers. But if you want to make your character more searchable, for example, you're doing a streamed game and you want people to be able to find your character, then you can change the URL to something that is is quotable and makes sense. Yeah, you can see here the URL for this character is not like very fancy, for yeah, example. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, it's going to be very hard to quote that in a stream. But yes, um, exactly. if you make it into worldanvil.com slash hero slash Lucy Diamond, that's that would be going to be easier. easy to say. Exactly. Um, so that is an option with the Epic Heroes as well. And I think that is all. Okay. That is essentially the quickest run 
through you can actually have of the heroes the hero um, yeah the hero workflow yeah 